let's talk about applying DevOps principles for SAP Integration Suite on a large scale. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to SAP Code Talk. And I have, for the first time, actually in the whole of Code Talk history, I believe, three people joining me. I have Shilpa, uh, I have Stefan, and I have Sajid. Shilpa, I'm not going to ask you to introduce yourself. Our audience knows you very well. Uh, apologies for that. But Stefan, if you can give a quick brief introduction to yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. And it's just great to be here. I've been with SAB for almost 20 years now, working in multiple roles, ranging across development, architecture, and program management. Uh, since 2017, I'm heading the development unit cloud integration, which provides the process integration capabilities of the SAP cloud integration suite. And yeah, again, thanks for the invitation. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us. So, Jed, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, uh, Jan. Thanks for having me here today on SAP Code Talk. I'm Sujit Ponmala, based out in Bangalore, have been in the industry for close to 60 years, out of which uh, 13 odd years I've been with SAP in various roles and responsibilities in various cloud operations and various cloud products. And in the last couple of years, I've also been heading the integration suite operations, which has close to 100 odd passionate engineers spread across the globe in four different countries. And I'm extremely happy to be here to share uh, our best practices with you. Excellent. Well, I'm going to stay with you, Sajit, actually. And my first question is, how many customers and SAP integration suite tenants do you currently run and operate? Yeah, sure. Let me take this question. Thanks for it. So as you might know, the SAP integration suite, which has capabilities like cloud integration, API management, Open Connectors Integration Advisor is one of the most successful cloud services on the business technology platform. In 2020, Gartner also rated us as the market leader in the enterprise integration platform as a service domain. So I hope you will agree that with huge success as well as adoption, we have the interesting challenge of large scale operations. To put this into perspective, we talk about close to 14,000 customers direct and indirect customers, and which accounts to approximately 30,000 tenants, which are served in different environments of SAP. It could be either the SAP's data center or AWS, Azure, or Ali Cloud, right? And we have around 30 plus data centers, which are globally distributed. So we provide our customers the flexibility to choose the infrastructure as well as the region of their choice, which best suits the business requirement, right? On cloud, we also guarantee service availability, which is of at most important for us to ensure that we have our 24 cross seven teams, which are equipped with the best tools in the industry to constantly monitor the landscape, the health of the landscape, as well as the customer tenants. Not only that, we have a strong focus on problem management. So we focus on analyzing recurring issues and finding a permanent fix for it. And last but not the least, Finally, we also talk about an agile organization, which is, we're extremely proud of our DevOps DNA. We believe in delivering faster value to our customers through a monthly shipment of software, which we do via a large scale zero downtime deployments, which has zero impact to our customers. Lovely, so Jeff, thank you for that very clear answer. So Stefan, I'm gonna go back to you. Um, so there's an operations team for SAP Integration Suite. How are DevOps principles applied in that team? Yes, so we still call it an operations team, but actually it's not. For example, Sujit mentioned the zero downtime updates his teams performs on large scale, but they are not just running the zero downtime software update. They are also building the corresponding tools and software for it. So the team really follows the DevOps paradigm of you build it, you run it. They are doing software development. Now, on the other side, now looking more from a development team's perspective, not only Surgit's team is monitoring the customer systems and landscapes, but also the development teams are doing this as well. Of course, the operations team is monitoring 24 times 7 across the globe. They are always standby for immediate reactions, but 
the development teams also have monitors where they oversee very technical aspects of the customer systems and the landscapes to understand how the software behaves in production. So with this approach, we are identifying, identifying potential problems before they impact our customers. So in reality, there is no clear separation any longer between the operations team and the development team. Both teams are developing software. Both teams are monitoring the software. Probably the major difference is, the, is clearly the operations setup, which is 24 times seven across the globe, while most Scrum development teams are set up eight times five, plus of course some additional support activities and that's it. Excellent. Thank you for that. Shilpa, welcome. We finally see you on screen. Uh, Thanks, yeah. <laughs> uh, if there's an issue with an SAP integration suite tenant, how is that resolved? Yeah, so we have multi-dimensional approach, starting from the problem de uh, detection to the resolution piece. And I would categorize it into two approaches, proactive and reactive. So let's see what we have as part of proactive approach. We have the monitoring infrastructure in place to detect application anomalies and self-healing mechanism to auto-recover, the first part. Second, in case there are exceptions, we have our 24 cross seven teams, which Stefan and also Surajit was mentioning, who are trained to perform the defined recovery procedures. The third one, if uh, in addition to this, we also have predictive analysis uh, carried out on the historical data to identify patterns and fix the potential issues. Mm -hmm. The second one, the reactive approach, this is when there is an uh, issue identified by the customers. We have global distributed and trained support experts who work on these customer issues closely with customers and our developers to identify also and fix these issues. On a concluding note, both these approaches are also backed up by a strong problem management team who analyze recurring problems and work towards providing a permanent fix to just get to know the root cause and providing the fix. So okay. this is something in place too. Good, good. Uh, Sajit, um, what's the typical issues that customers say uh, they have with their, when their integration scenarios don't work? Yep. Well, uh, our customers operate in an extremely hybrid as well as in complex environment. So uh, there could be multiple reasons when a customer says that their integration scenario isn't working. The integration scenarios could be something like a very simple iFlow, which talks about a cloud to cloud connection or a cloud to an on-premise connection or it could be extremely complex with multiple cloud solutions and multiple on-premise solutions, or even to make it even worse, we could also talk about third-party solutions which are not managed by SAP. So for a simple message to pass from a receiver system to a center system, right? it has to go through multiple network layers, multiple systems, which are maybe not even managed by SAP, but with different teams. right? So. Uh, based on the past experience, which we have gained at SAP, looking at the customer scenarios, we have broadly classified these into three. The first one being the infrastructure issues. It could be, let's say, an infrastructure issue at the customer side or the third party solution provider, or even at SAP. Mm -hmm. The second one could be a simple configuration issue. It could be an endpoint URL issue or to do with the authentication mechanism. It's either basic authentication or certificate. Or we also have proxies and network configurations, which could be at the customer side or at the third party solution side, right? So, and then finally, we talk about the content, which is managed by the SAP, managed by the customer. So there could be also some design issue with the content. So to conclude, so we have to analyze this in multiple dimensions to really figure out what the problem could be. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back for the last question to Stefan. Stefan. Uh, data protection and security is really close to all of our hearts and, and especially with, with SAP. How do we ensure that uh, the, um, the data protection and security uh, is kept for the integration suite? Yeah, you are absolutely right. So security and data protection are probably the most important aspects for every cloud service and hence also we treat this with highest priority. 
as we are running a DevOps model, we have integrated our security measures into every phase of the software life cycle. So starting in the planning, grooming, concept work, throughout the development, testing, and finally also, of course, during operations and monitoring. In each of these phases, we apply security measures. This is never and can't be an afterthought only. Mm. So for example, we constantly monitor with the development and operations experts, the status and results of vulnerability scans. This allows us to react really fast to any potential vulnerability and ensuring that we resolve them before they can reach the live system. Now, although we do have security measures built into the, every development phase, this obviously has to be extended also with external tests and external certifications. For example, we execute external hacker simulations or even penetration tests are performed by our customers. And of course, we have our own internal security validations. On top of that, we are being audited twice a year by external auditing companies. For example, we are certified for SOC 1 and SOC 2. We have several ISO certification covering information security and business continuity. And all these certifications are issued by independent auditors and very important to us, but also requested, of course, by our customers. Now, coming back to the DevOps part, Although we integrate our security measures into the DevOps model, there are certain security topics which require really a dedicated setup. For example, there is the European Union data protection regulation, which implies that every employee has to reside in a European Union in order to access a customer system, for example, for maintenance activities. These kind of regional regulations require a very specific setup and of course, we are providing this to our customers as well. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining me on Code Talk today. Shilpa, Sergey, Stefan, thank you for very clear answers to my questions. Uh, and thank you again for joining me. Thanks, Jan, for having us here. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Jan.